In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, Before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of truth, Help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom, that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. A reading from St. Matthew's Gospel. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out following his instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, but the labourers deserve their food. 
Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is in it, where they have to stay with them on leave. And you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return with you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet so that you leave the town of, or the house. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep among the wolves. Be as wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them. They will hand you over to the councils and flog you in the synagogues. You will be dragged before governors and kings before because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and the father his father speaking through them. Brother will betray, and children will raise among their, their parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated because of all this, because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. For when they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the Gospel of the Lord. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. My world since I began this role in Liverpool has been a world filled with tears, daily ministering to the brokenhearted, the grief stricken and the bereaved. My world has been a world in which I have learned to share in the compassion of Christ for those who are at a loss. And when there is a loss, gathering together, is what families do. They come together. They close in. They hug one another. They touch one another, weep with one another and support one another. Often the one that's left behind, the widow, for example, is swamped by the kindness of others. As the sadness is shared, the burden is dispersed and the pain is eased. Then the life is celebrated, the soul is commended, forgiveness sought for the sins and the act of letting go is made complete by the blessing and committal of that loved one to the one who gave them life. And in this space, the space that those who minister to the bereaved take in, in this space we see sadness and desolation and grief. In this space, I believe it is the church's job to look upon all children of God with compassion, because in their loss, they are like sheep without a shepherd. Knee-jerk responses and reactions feel all kinds of decisions when someone dies. Spending money on beautiful funerary elements helps solve the pain of separation. A nice coffin, fine flowers, professional service booklets, choosing music, poems, readings, pictures to have printed, flags to have draped and wakes to celebrate the life that's now lost are in many ways very good distractions that enable the bereaved to make it through and to find their purpose. And that purpose, I believe, is to show the world and its dog that this life, the life of the person that they have loved, made a difference. And so we do what we can 
to make sure we do the right thing because our loved one deserves it. As Christians, to help a brother or sister regain their sense of purpose after a time of loss is something that we will all have been part of. That process of rebuilding whilst remembering. The process of moving on whilst never wanting to forget. The process of feeling hopeful whilst wanting to dwell in a state of hopelessness. It is all a process of living, muddling through, jollying along, acknowledging confusion and accepting there sometimes are no answers. This is the reality in which we all live because we are all human after all. To look upon the crowds at funerals who are bereft and for us to notice the sadness in the room is the church's job. It's our job. It's my job and it's your job. It is the church's job to face the reality that death comes to each and every one of us. And the church needs to show compassion. The compassion of Jesus, it is what we are called to do. Since lockdown began, myself and Father Stephen have done the church's job. We have ministered to almost 70 families whose hearts have been broken. We have noticed for the church the sadness in the room. We have looked for the church upon the gathered at the graveside and in the crematoria and we have journeyed with them. We have shared on the church's behalf their heartache that more people could not come to those funerals. We have done our job. We have done the church's job as priests who are called to such a ministry. And we have shared the compassion of Christ as we witness their loss and their grief. And the process of a funeral is still to show the world that loved ones are special. And even in lockdown, that process might feel so different and yet it's exactly the same. For the 10 who are allowed, the funeral, farewell, ceremony, celebration and goodbye becomes the most precious gift they have ever been given. And the purpose of a funeral has been given once more the central stage. Because now it can't be about the flowers and the cards and the balloons. It can't be about the coffin or the casket, the photos, the service books. It now has to be simply the reality that in the face of death, when we are at our saddest, what we need is compassion and love and hope. And the funeral at its heart is about acknowledging life is a gift from God, celebrating what we have achieved with that gift given to us and reflecting on what difference it has made to those who are there. So that as we wander away from the graveside, or file in socially distanced appropriateness from the Creme Chapel, we know that we have been in the presence of the compassion of Christ, who comes to all who are lost like a good and faithful shepherd. The gospel reading gives us the image of Jesus, seeing the people tired and angry, harassed, peeved off, nagging at their neighbours, shouting at boisterous children, they are hunger and their limbs are aching. They are following because Jesus has been doing wondrous things. He has cleansed a leper. He has calmed a storm. He has healed a bleeding woman and a paralysed child. He has helped two men whose lives were damaged by their mental health illness. He has cured the blind and allowed a man who is mute to speak 
once again. This crowd are waiting for something good to happen. All of them are waiting in case it might be their turn next, hanging on in there in case a miracle comes to them or someone that they love. And you know what? Jesus looks at the crowd. They're harassed. They're hungry. They're tired. They're moaning. And he has compassion on them because he sees they are at a loss. And he acknowledges in that moment that the Son of God, the incarnation of the world, has a job that is too big for one person. He knows that this job is a job for the church. The harvest is plentiful, says Jesus, but the labourers are few. And so the twelve are called. The roles are designated and the task of showing the compassion of God through the ministry of all people now begins. The ministry of the church, ordained or lay. The ministry of the baptised. The ministry of you and me, of all the believers, is what Jesus calls us to action for. What our church will look like in the coming weeks and months is unknown to us. And yet I believe that God is looking on us, on our church, on its people with compassion. Not because we are lost or bereft, not because we feel abandoned or left away from him. Jesus, God, the Spirit, looks on us with compassion because he shares our heart, he feels our separatedness, and he knows our desire to receive him sacramentally and incarnationally with one another in our home of St. Margaret's. He knows, he definitely knows, and he looks upon me and you and all of our people with compassion. So as we cling to guidelines, and as we pray for clarity, and as we hope that the R rate will diminish, let us know the work of the church is to share in the ministry of all its people. That's you, that's me, that's all of us at St Margaret's. And let us know that we need to share the compassion of Christ to all who feel lost and all who feel bereft. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. A Sunday Prayer by Nadia Boltzweber. 
God, whose name has been used to enslave those who bear your image. God, whose name has been used to steal this land and kill those who bear your image. God, whose name was called upon by Moses and Miriam and Martin Luther King Jr. and Sojourner Truth, Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. God, who raised up prophets to speak truth to power and poets to speak truth to stupid. We call on your holy name to give us what we need to undo, what has been done in your name. We call on your name to bring your fierce mercy upon us and remove our complacency and our complicity. We call on your name to heal the wounds of those whose daily reality we do not understand. We call on your name to give us a holy curiosity about what being black in this country and around the world is really like, Lord. We call on your name to free us from the notions of being good that keep us from hearing this truth. We call on your name to give us this day our daily truth our daily humility, our daily rage and our daily hope. Cities and countries are burning, Lord. May it be a cleansing Holy Spirit fire. Guide us to believe that the true name of God is stronger than what has been done in God's name. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
first on the hillside, are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. From sunrise to sunset, this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day, the risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word, and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so, with choirs of angels, and with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory, and join their unending song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Margaret, Our Lady Mary, and all the saints, May praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We pray.
break this bread, to share in the body of Christ. So we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with your heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Peace of God passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.